Okay, we didn't include materials, but we have set aside some time, y'all, to talk about the proposed 2053 regulations and where Greg and Loan stand in today's environment. Kathy, are you going to kick this off? I'll kick it off. Um, I think what we're going to do is cover each one a little at a time and and not spend very much time on any one of them. Uh, this is this the proposed regs set out four areas of concern and four areas that they're proposing to make some changes in. The first one is that they're proposing to apply or to require a present value discount or calculation for a deduction uh, for anything that's paid after the quote grace period, which is basically three years from date of death. Um, Larry, anything you think uh, we ought to tell the audience about this? Well, I think the main thing is to remember that these regulations are not final. They're, I think, very likely to be changed before the final regulations come out. Uh, ACTEC and uh, the New York State Bar and all sorts of other organizations have submitted written comments, some of which I think make very good points. And so I'd be surprised if we get final regulations that are like the ones now. They did cancel the hearing because only one person wanted to testify, but that doesn't mean that uh, they didn't get lots of comments in writing, uh, which they did. So I think it'll be a while before these become effective. And uh, I, my guess is that the final regulations will differ in some respects from what we have now. I think, for example, that the three-year uh, window after if you have to start taking into account time value money, that may get extended to, uh, I mean, many of our largest states, we don't get closed in three years. Um, so I think that may get extended, for example. As a, most, of, most of the estates um, pay as much as possible. Well, they might put off paying because they have, they're litigating things. So that mm -hmm. present value, you may be right that the time frame for present valuing it uh, maybe uh, extended, but I don't know. Is that one of the comments that has been? Um, yes, that was one. That is one of the comments that was made. I mean, the other things that I, I think concern people are the fact that uh, the the service seems to think that we're all making our estates illiquid, so we have to borrow money and deduct the interest. And so, one of the things the regulations talk about is. You can't arrange your affairs to make it necessary to borrow money. And yeah. I think that's really unrealistic. I, first, I don't think people do that. <laughs> and I don't see how they're going to prove it one way or the other. Are they going to say because the guy ran out of money, he doesn't, you know, or his estate is substantially diminished that it was um, structured in such a way? And if they made gifts, isn't that what we're entitled to do? So I don't think that that uh, would or should uh, end up in the final regulations. The other thing that although, I thought, I'm sorry, go ahead. I will say, although, Kathy, I think historically we have seen cases in the Gregan context specifically where families engaged in significant planning a day, two days, a week before death, including creation of family limited partnerships and putting all of the assets into those that is in the services view, a self-created liquidity crisis. And that, that's how it was phrased in several of the cases. And I think that that is a very different scenario than what you're pointing to. But I think that is to some degree what the service and treasury are concerned about in these regs. The other thing I think that they'll get a lot of pushback on is, is this provision. I'm gonna read you the, the language on which loans they will respect what you can deduct the interest on. The loan on which interest accrues and the loan's terms are actually and necessarily incurred in the administration of the decedent's estate and are essential to the proper settlement of the decedent's estate. Well, there's very little that is absolutely essential, but there's many times when it is extremely helpful in administration of the estate to- uh, whenever, whenever you use words like essential, it is so, it's such a, a vague word that I just can't see how they can base uh, regulation on that. I but they, oh, I they love they, words like that are essential because yeah. <laughs> it just leads to litigation. It's easier to it's attack, great. yes. <laughs> yeah. But they do, they do have in these proposed regs very specific uh, provisions with respect to what the loan has to look like. It has to be documented in an instrument. It has to be bona fide. 
and actually and necessarily incurred and essential. And it can't be between a family member or, and it can't be with a beneficiary. So it can't be structured in such a way that it would um, enhance what a beneficiary actually ends up getting by getting all the interest. <laughs>